So here's another example of Stokes theorem. Again, statement of Stokes theorem says that if you want to find uh, the work or a line integral along a curve, just find a surface whose frontier, whose boundary is this curve, and instead of computing the integral directly, you can apply, you can compute this integral of the surface of what of the dot product between the curl and the normal vector. Okay. In order to use Stokes, you have to parametrize first your surface, as I explained in the previous video. And once you parameterize the surface, you can obtain both the normal vector and the surface differential. Okay. So in this particular case, we're going to use Stokes for this vector field, minus y cubed, x cubed, negative c cubed. And the curve that we're going to take uh, is the intersection of a plane and uh, the unit circle. Let me just check. This is the same as in my notes. Good. So, what's the curve? You take the unit circle. Uh, the unit circle, um, again, in space, looks like a cylinder. And there's this plane who's, like, doesn't really matter how it looks like, but let's say it looks like this. And so the plane will cut the circle somewhere, and it may not cut like the circle in a, let me make this more dramatic. It will cut, cut slice the cylinder in what will look like a tilted uh, circle, uh, or like an ellipse. So here's the plane, x plus y plus c equals one. And uh, the curves uh, that we're talking about, that we care about, is this curve. Here's the curve C. That's the intersection between the cylinder and the plane. And uh, in order to apply Stokes' theorem, I didn't say it here. But again, you, you have to imagine that you, you need to find a surface whose uh, boundary whose frontier is that circle. So what you can do for surface in this case is to fill in this circle uh, on the plane. So imagine you just color the region on the plane whose boundary is that circle. So you can do that at home. Take a bottle. Imagine cutting that with a... Imagine the bottle being cut down by a, a, a piece of paper and then there will be a uh, like uh, a, part, a part of the paper trapped inside the bottle and that's the one that I'm taking as the surface. Okay, here's the surface. And again, we have to parameterize first the surface. So x, y, z, uh, so s is part of the plane. The part of the plane contained inside the bottle or the cylinder. Now, the idea is that because it's part of the plane, if you take a point on the surface, uh, it belongs to the plane, right? So you can say that it satisfies the equation of the plane, and so you can say that uh, z equals 1 minus x minus 1. And so what that really means is that any point of this purple region is specified by x and y. Once you know x and y, uh, you know what the set is supposed to be. So the parametrization in this case is fairly easy, it's just in terms of x and y. It's just uh, any point is of the form x, comma y, comma 1 minus x minus y. Okay? So it's like a f version of Cartesian coordinates. We're using, using Cartesian coordinates, but you just have to use the fact that uh, one of the variables disappears when working on the plane. Okay, and now uh, let's see, where should I continue? Well, mm, let me write here the vector field. Let's do uh, once you do. Uh, once you have the parametrization, we go by steps. 
take the partial derivatives with respect to x and y of, of that. This is way easier than the previous case. This is just 1, 0, negative 1. And with respect to y, it gives you 0, 1, negative 1. And so their cross product is uh, fairly straightforward. So So this is uh, 1, this is 1, and this is 1. So the normal, the vector field, the normal vector without, before normalizing it, is 1, 1, 1. I didn't want to spoil the surprise, but it has to be that, because the coefficients of the plane are 1, 1, 1. And remember that a normal vector to the plane are just the coefficients that appear here. Okay? And so, in particular, we already have the, uh, so we know this, we know the normal vector, uh, let's see, yeah, okay, I think I don't need this, if this is too easy, so, uh, the normal vector is just, uh, this normalized, so the norm is, uh, root of 3, so it's 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, Right, because the norm of that vector is root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. And then ds is just uh, root of 3 times dy dx. And now we did this, we did this, now we need the curl of f. Curl of f, we know what f is. Curl of f. Again, uh, there's another choice for the unit normal vector, which is flipping the entries of each coordinate here. But as I said, I will specify which normal vector to use. In this case, I would have told you, use the normal vector whose coordinates are positive or something like that. Minus y cube, s cube, minus c cube, and this also is not too bad, I believe, uh, this is zero, zero, and then three x squared plus three y squared. Good. And so, uh, that's a curl, and the uh, work, uh, let's see. The work will be, so the work by Stokes is just the integral of the dot product of the integral over the surface of the dot product between the curl and let's, let's write it like this, 0, 0, 3 x squared plus y squared times n ds, which is root of 3 dy dx. And, well, we no longer need this, so let's work here. So, again, the only thing that survives when you do the dot product between this curl and n is the last ent entry. So, you get uh, uh, an integral of 3 over root 3 of x squared plus y squared. That was a dot product, and then you multiply that by root of 3 dy dx, and here it comes to this fact that I mentioned in the previous video that usually there's always a cancellation, uh, which is fine, but it is what it is. And now, now you have to worry about the bounds that uh, y and x take, but notice that as I was saying, every point here is specified by x and y, so every point is in correspondence with its shadow, and so the bounds for x and y are really the bounds for the unit disk. And so if you switch to polar coordinates, you can say this is from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to 1. Uh, this becomes r squared. Uh, the root 3 is cancelled, so you get 3 r squared. And then this changes to r dr d theta. So what I'm saying is that really the bounds are obtained by looking at the shadow on the x-y plane. 
And once you know this, this is very easy. Like the integral of uh, 3r cubed is uh, this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Well, 2 pi again doesn't, you can just take it outside already. And then this becomes uh, 3 r to the 4 over 4 at 0, 1. And let me just say that that's the same as 6 pi over 4 or 3 pi over 2. And let me just check the answer so that I don't make a mistake as before. Yeah, this is okay. And so this work uh, in this case gives us uh, 3 pi over 2. And again, you could have comp uh, you are well invited to compute this by making the actual line integral if you want and you should get still 3 pi over 2.